If you were to look at the stock market right now, you would see that the finance sector is not doing well except for some of these stocks that we're going to talk about today. But what are these companies? Why are they doing well? We are going to go ahead and break it down. I'm going to tell you right now, one of these I wish I bought, I made a mistake on, and I'm going to admit that mistake. I'm also going to give you a company that I think is undervalued by nearly 50%. So let's go ahead and break it down. I'm going to give you three, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, our members only got all five, and they got all five early before you are watching this video. So the benefits to being inside the members only. But I'll go ahead and start with Flea Core Technology. They are up, well, first off, the stock symbol is FLT. Okay, FLT, feel free to look them up as we we're discussing it. They're up 28% in the last six months and up 30% over the last year. And I'm giving you that one for free, which means that inside the members only, they have even better results than this one. Um, but they are in the digital payment space, mostly business to business. The good thing here is again, payment systems, control systems, they're required, right? If I'm a business and I want to take money in and spend money on stuff, which is what businesses do, I'm going to need a company like this. If I look at the entire finance sector, banks aren't doing well. We've talked about that before. Some of these tech companies that are in the finance space are, and this is one of those. Now, the thing I like most about this company is they're not the most ubiquitous. They're not everywhere. It's not a household brand name like, uh, let's say PayPal, right? I don't. I think everybody knows the name PayPal, right? But everybody doesn't know Fleecor, which means that they have room to grow. Right, they are relatively big in Brazil. They have some operations here. They have some spotty operations across the world, but it's not it's not huge. So anytime you, you can invest in a company that's doing well and still have room to grow, I think that that spells potential, right? That spells potential and that could help your portfolio to a new height in the future. So that's one that you wanna to add to your watch list, do a bit more research on and perhaps pull the trigger if you like what you see. Next one here is one that we have mentioned before and that is Marsh and McClellan. That stock symbol is MMC. They're up 18% in the last six months and up 21% over the last year. Why should you have heard this one before? Well, first off, because you should have subscribed to the channel. If you have subscribed to the channel, you probably would have saw this video. And that means that this company was inside of our best dividend stocks for every sector. They made the list for the best dividend stock in the finance category. It's a finance video. That's why we're talking about it. Um, so not only do they pay a pretty solid dividend, they're in the consulting space. In the consulting space, specifically for insurance, which makes this pretty interesting because it the positive is they don't have a lot of overhead, which means they, they're our, they are a, what I like to call a cash cow. The money's gonna come in and it's gonna be quite profitable because they're not a manufacturing company. It's not for where I have to pay for materials and plants and workers and all types of, you know, fabrication plants. It's, it's expensive. It's expensive to build a car. They're not doing that. They are consulting in the insurance space to helping them run their businesses better. That's the positive part of it. And it is a dependable, consistent business, just like insurance is. The downside to this is I don't know what the growth potential is here. With Fleet Corps, I feel like they can grow exponentially. Marshall McClellan, is, it can make me money. Okay, let's get that straight. I think it can make you money, but is it going to be exponential? Is it going to continue to grow for an inordinate amount of time? I don't know. And that's because how often do you see new insurance companies? You see new tech companies pop up all the time, but insurance is old money. I mean, how long has New York life been around? Right, think about New York Life, Progressive, Liberty, 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 because I see like, those commercials all the time. Insurance is very old, it's very established, it's gonna be here, and that is their main customer. So I don't know whether or not you're going to see that again, the exponential growth where you're making, not, I'm just throwing a number out here, you know, 100 million, 200 million, 300 million, but will it be 100, 102, 104? Yeah, probably. So that's the, that's the downside there. Their their customers are very boring. They don't grow much, but their customers they're gonna be here for a very long time. So you can take that how you wish. I don't think insurance is a dying industry. Okay, so that is one that I would definitely add on the list. It's probably one of the ones where I'm you know closest to buying is MMC. So there are a few things I need to go and read up on before I pull the trigger personally. When I do, I'll let y'all know. But this has been very, very close on my watch list and slowly moving their way up my watch list as well. And here's the one where I made a mistake. Perhaps, perhaps I made a mistake, okay? It's Visa. 
is Visa. And Visa is up just 8% in the last six months and up 24% over the last year. But here's the issue. Or perhaps it's an advantage, depending on how you want to look at it. Right now, at the time that we're doing this video, Visa is trading about $264 per share. Now, based on what I saw when I pulled their free cash flow over the last 10 years, they should be worth above $500, like $515, $516 per share is what they should be valued at. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I know how math works. And um, 500 is greater than 264. This company is likely undervalued and undervalued by close to 50% or so. That's value, ladies and gentlemen. And the great thing is, you know Visa. Visa is a well-established business that's going to be here and ain't going nowhere. And if you are looking for undervalued companies and you like to follow what a lot of famous investors do, I'm not one of those famous investors, not yet, but Warren Buffett, he invested back in 2000, this is 2011 actually, $290 million in Visa that is now worth a little over $2 billion today. Okay, so it's in his portfolio. He bought, obviously, I wish I had bought it way back in 2011, but I was a poor college kid. But Visa is still chugging along in a good forward motion, and it might be one that you want to add to your portfolio. The mistake that I made, though, is I compared Visa to Discover, and I felt that Discover should have been worth closer to like $550 per share, which is slightly more than what Visa should be worth in my calculations. Perhaps my calculations are just completely wrong. But again, the way that I'm evaluating these companies, I thought Discover was going to be worth more uh, or should have been worth more is a better better way to look at it. Discover is not doing all that great. Now, for me, I still have several months to go before I hit my deadline and decide whether it was right or whether it was wrong. But obviously, looking back, and this everybody does this, looking back at hindsight, I really wish I had bought Visa instead of Discover because I would be making money right now. We will see where these companies go. You can throw a MasterCard in there. Their performance, at least the last time I checked, which was last week, was very, very similar. Um, but I think Visa has a better profile when it comes to their finances. How much they're making and spending, I think Visa is, is really top of the class there because not only do they have that, they're also making you money as an investor right now. So that is the reason why Visa is on the list. Now, all of these are very good, very solid companies, but the problem is they're all in one category. They are in finance, which again, it's okay, but you want to make sure that you're diversified. You need stocks from every single category. And if that is what you're looking for, then you wanna check out this video right here where I cover every single sector and the best dividend stock in those sectors. So go ahead and watch this one right now.